Okay, bet. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, so be before I get into a, um, to everything when it comes to sports, what I always ask people is, um, what are you watching right now? Like, what are some of the shows you're watching right now? <laughs> um, well, first, one of the reasons I wanted to do it, well, Craig, my cousin obviously told me about you, but then when the conversation that we had had, um, I would, you just the questions you asked off rip, I was like, oh, I know, I know you are great at dialogue and great at having conversation. Like you just, I like having these type of conversations. Appreciate that, man. So that was, I appreciate I was, that. I was, I was even more excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but honestly, I'm glad you asked that too, because I just got done watching Genius. I just got done watching the Kanye documentary. Oh um, yeah, yeah. The third episode. Okay. And yeah, Kanye, Kanye is one of my favorite. Make sure you like this um, video and one of my subscribe. favorite uh, rappers, artists, entertainers, whatever celebrities, whatever you want to call it. Just because you know, when I was growing up, I think you know, obviously Jay Z was Jay Z, Big Tupac. I was probably like seven, eight years old. My brother was listening to that in the house, so I listened to it. And obviously, I, I love those dudes, no doubt. But when I really started listen, listening, listening to hip hop and getting into hip hop. I was like 12 when Country Grammar came out, but then College Dropout came out right before I got into high school. And I think I listened to College Dropout, I don't know how many times straight, for at least at least 100 times straight through. I used to be walking down the halls and all that, listening to College Dropout. Classic, and, man. Know, it's a classic. It, it's, it's a classic. And it was more just how I grew up. Kanye related more to what he was talking about, related more to how I grew up more than a lot of them other rappers um, at the yeah. time. And you know he talked about he talked about that in the documentary about how he relates to you know he relates to the dude from the hood he relates to the dude from you know from the suburbs he relates to to the white kid he really is just the mo it's the most universal thing because he's really just talking about a hustle and then I always I always think it's dope because he was really on this this woke stuff or whatever you want to call it um, he was then, really man, on that a lot yeah back then because he was kicking it with Common and most Def and all them dudes who was really about that back in the day. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's what I just got done watching. And then I, obviously the Will Smith. <laughs> Go oh, ahead. So you did, you did watch that. Okay. So you did watch Bel Air a little bit. I had, I had to check it out. I had to check it out. I was, I was going to be mad. Like I was kind of mad cause you know, they, they ruining all these classics coming to America too was all right. But it was, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like leave, leave the classics alone. But he, he did his thing with Bel Air a little bit. Okay, um, I was going to get to that. I was just going to, I was waiting for you to finish cause I was going to ask. How do you feel about it? Because, I, you know, um, when I originally saw the trailer, I was with it right away because I, I saw the different aspect or the different um, direction that they were taking it. Right. So mm -hmm. I saw because they were now you're able to push the envelope because it's no longer on NBC. You right. can you can tell the other side of the story, like what was really going down in Philly, the scuffle that he got into. Um, well, how he wasn't really accepted and stuff when he got to Bel Air right away, because everybody thought he was a he was hood, he was ghetto, all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. how how did you feel? Like, how did you feel about it? Like after you saw everything, man, I thought I thought it was super dope. Pretty much what you just said. He, I don't think uh, he could have done it any better. Bringing like a timeless classic from the era that it was in into into the era that we live in now. And again, I went to private Catholic school, so I went to school. I, I not quite the same as Bel Air Prep, but similar in terms of demographic. So I know that upbringing, and you know all the little microaggression jokes that were ha ha funny in the in the comedy are right. now you know they're, they're I mean they're they're real issues, and obviously not everything need to be serious all the time, but they're real issues. So I just thought it was dope how he showed was able to kind of transform, like you said, that from the from the uh, kind of the passive aggressive stuff that made everybody comfortable at the time to now it's like a, what, you know, he's really showing how pe how we feel, how, how I felt in those situations. Like, man, you really want to knock him off. I don't know if we can cuss, excuse my language, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know you really, yeah. yeah. You really knock someone out. You feel like knocking someone out at the time. Cause you walking down the hallway and they, you know, they feel like saying the N word and you got to check them or whatever and yada, yada, yada. Like it's so, Either way, I, I thought I thought it was super dope how he brought it in into the time period that we live in now, and I think he did a great job with it, um, whether you like the show or not. So. Nah, for sure. And um, so I'm a I'm a I'm a big binge watcher type of dude, right? So when I watch stuff, I like to I check out like the first couple of episodes, and then I will wait until it's over with, just so I can watch it like 
if I want to spend a whole day watching something, I can watch that. So it was kind of the mm -hmm. same. This is this is kind of going back to the Kanye that you uh, the Kanye uh, documentary because I haven't watched it yet because I was waiting for all of the the episodes to come out. Now since they're all out, now I'm gonna go back and watch that for sure. Definitely gonna go go back. Yeah, and watch that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to, you got to. I want, I wanted five more episodes of that. Honestly, I was kind of mad. I finished it. So how many? How many was it? It's only three. It's only, only three, three. That's but they're about okay. an hour. Yeah, they're about an hour, hour and a half each. But yeah, they. I think I hope he drops more. Good man. Because that was bet, bet. that was bet. fire. All right, let me go ahead and intro this real quick. New viewers, welcome. Returning viewers, welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am your humble host, Alan Cole Beasy Colburn, and in the building with me right now, Minnesota Basketball Player of the Year in high school, Wisconsin Badger point guard. All Big Ten, you make, how many times did you make All Big Ten team? Twice, yeah, right? Twice. Yep, twice. Yeah. Two times All Big Ten team, All Big Ten defensive team, and you were an All American your senior year, correct? Junior, junior, junior year, and then senior year, honorable mention, both technically. Senior year, so both years. So, okay, look, I don't want to take nothing away. So, yeah, both years. <laughs> Two times All, All American. Jordan Taylor is in the building. What's up, bro? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm really good, man. Um, first of all, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to sit down with me, sit down with Baseline to Goal Line to do this interview. I really appreciate it. Um, just to put things in perspective, where are you currently? Man, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Appreciate you. No problem. Um, and yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in Tokyo, Tokyo, Japan, about 20 minutes west of Tokyo. Um, currently looking at Mount Fuji, which is pretty cool. So it's uh, oh, that's um, dope. Uh, yeah, over over yeah yeah over east. So um, been here since September uh, in my tenth professional basketball season. And yeah, getting old, man. Time flies. So you're getting better, man. It's called season, bro. You you just getting better, Facts. man. That's, that's all that is. Facts. Uh, Time frame, just for the people that's out there listening right now. Time frame, what 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 is the time right now for you? It's nine thirty a.m. So we are fifteen hours ahead. We in the future a little bit. Fifteen hours ahead of uh of the of the Midwest and fourteen of the East Coast. Yeah, man. So once again, man, thank you for that, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for for waking up um, to do this interview, man. It's is is greatly appreciated, Absolutely. man. For sure. Um, Absolutely. Another thing that I like to do before we get into why we came here is I like to do a toast. And um, the toast is pretty much always the same. I always, you know, raise a glass. We ask people what they sipping on. So down in the comments below, let me know what it is that you're sipping on. I know it's early over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, it's, it's early. It's early. I ain't been to the store. I'm normally a Casamigos guy, but I'm gonna go. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go okay. straight out the bottle this morning. Bourbon. So, yeah. Okay. So real quick. So <laughs> I got uh some 1800 tequila. You got okay. the, right. the Jim Beam. You got the bourbon. Okay. And what we always toast to is always to life, health, wealth, and last but not least, sports talk. Salute. Salute and love, man. Appreciate you. Woof. Yeah, I know, right? Hit yeah, you. Not, now, we can, <laughs> now we can get everything I'm popping. Not, I, <laughs> man, I'm no I'm normally I'm normally like you. I'm normally like you. I'm a tequila drinker. I'm the clock class A or uh or Casamigos all day. So man, that yeah, that bourbon hit that bourbon hurt. <laughs> so you know what? So let me ask you the truth and and the your your um thoughts about Casamigos, right? So mm -hmm. Do you think it's more of a fad type of thing, or do you do you actually like it? Do you think it's real good? Listen, I think I, I was drinking Casamigos not to be that guy, but I was drinking Casamigos before before it became the fad. No, we're gonna be that guy. This show and, us a brag a little bit. Yeah, we, we're gonna be that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been a tequila I've been I mean I don't I don't drink crazy but I've been a tequila guy for forever since forever and uh, 
Cosmigos is a is it's a fad. It's solid though. You can get better tequilas off the shelf for a cheaper price. Um, like matter of fact, there's one like Terramina. I think even the Rocks Terramina. tequila. Um, the Rock. Yep. I was Terramina. just yeah, Terramina. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I normally drink. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one's solid. I think it's probably half the price, maybe, or something like that. And um, there's one called Ka, I think. Uh, there's another one called Ka that's decent. It might be a little more expensive, but no, it's definitely a fad. That's why I like I like Class A, and I like um, I like I like obviously uh, 1942, but that's way too expensive to to be buying that. Like, I mean, yeah. sure, for for the taste is not that, but it's, it's definitely a fad. But Casamigos is still it's still solid. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, so let's just jump right into it, man. I want to um, start kind of right around your high school career, then we'll transition to your collegiate career, then we'll end with your pro career. Um, you grew up in Minnesota, correct? Yep. Were you Minneapolis, born in Minneapolis, Bloomington, Minnesota? I was born in Minneapolis, grew up in Bloomington, Minnesota. Um, I actually grew up like five minutes from Cole Aldrich, who went to Kansas and then got drafted. Uh, we would would have gone to the same high school, but I ended up going to a private school. So, yeah. okay. Um, was was basketball like the only sport as a kid? Was basketball the only sport that you that you played growing up, or did you play anything else? Uh, no, I played everything. I think <laughs> I played literally everything. I played hockey for two weeks or for a month or something like that. And <laughs> yeah, I played hockey. I grew up like I like I said, I grew up in the suburbs of Minnesota. And I, they wouldn't let where I was from. They wouldn't let you play up in basketball. So I think when I was like seven, um, I, they only had like a third grade or fourth grade program or something. So I was in second grade, first grade, second grade. So they wouldn't let you play up. And I just played hockey. And then I got tired of waking up at 5 a.m. to go to ice rink. And I realized nobody out there looked like me. And I had an asthma attack. So I was like, nah, this ain't for me. But I was like Luis Mendoza from Mighty Ducks. I was fast That's but couldn't funny. stop. Hey, so wait, <laughs> was, was it more so an asthma attack or did you have a panic attack because it wasn't nobody that looked like us out there? <laughs> man, man, that's, uh, man, looking back on it, it was probably a panic attack. But at the time, I thought it was asthma. It's was probably That's a little funny. bit of both. That's probably funny. a little bit of both. But yeah, no, I, I played soccer, football, hockey, baseball, basketball. Um, I, yeah, I play, I play pretty much everything growing up. So we know that you, you know, we hear because of, um, you becoming a stellar basketball player, but do you feel like there was anything else, any of the other sports that you played that you could have taken, if you took serious enough that you could have played, um, collegially or professionally? Yeah. Baseball for sure. I was, I was much better at baseball, to be honest. I just, I couldn't really? stay in baseball practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't stand baseball practice. Like it was, it was so boring to me. The only fun part was doing the relays and running the bases. But other than that, it was just too much standing around and and all that. Like I really, I really just couldn't focus on it. But um, yeah, no, definitely, definitely baseball. What position did you play? I played shortstop and center field, and then. Um, by the time I got to high school, I played my ninth grade year and I, I was kind of, I was getting worse because I never worked at it. I was getting worse at it and they moved me out to center. And I just, again, did not want to play center field. I was either shortstop or I, I was, I'm stubborn in general, but with baseball, I was hella stubborn. I was like, if I'm not playing, if I'm not playing shortstop, I'm not playing. So they put me out in center field and, and that was a wrap. <laughs> it was over with. Okay. So yeah. if, so, so now I shouldn't say so now, but. I know you mentioned your 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 freshman year in high school. When around the time, because you just also mentioned that you guys couldn't play up now for basketball. Now was that something that you couldn't play up? Period. Like even further on down the line, you couldn't play up like at all, or was that just something that was just during that time period? You know, it happened again. Uh, it. It, it happened again down the line because it happened when I was in first grade and then I got to uh, what was it, fifth grade. No, what was it? No, I got to fourth grade and the same thing happened. So that's where I ended up. Actually, my best friend or one of my best friends to this day, I ended up meeting him through AAU and his dad uh, had told my pretty much convinced my dad or what happened, whatever happened to since I couldn't play up to come play with them at the with the private school team. So I played with them and that's how I ended up at that school. Um, oh, wow. Okay. 
Yeah, so since they wouldn't let me play up and the private school team would, I ended up playing up with the private school team. And, you know, it was just that, you know, how I mean, in the Midwest, especially like I'm sure where, where'd you I forgot where you grew up. You grew up in uh, I grew up in Wisconsin. You grew up, you grew up in Wisconsin. OK, yeah. yeah. So I'm sure. Yeah. OK, so I'm sure, you know, like the Midwest is just funny, too. Yeah, especially back then in the 90s it was real old school. Like everything sure. was kind of by the book. Sure. Like, well, you and, know, the, yeah, the funny so. thing is, like here around this area, the Milwaukee Racine area, we were able to play up. They didn't have any of those. Okay. They, didn't, they didn't have any of those rules where you couldn't play up. And I, I'm, we're going to touch on this later, too, but um, kind of debunk this myth now or either validate the myth. And then we'll touch on it as we get towards your, more towards your high school career. In mm. eighth grade in Minnesota, I hear that you can play varsity basketball, varsity sports in eighth grade in, yeah. in the state of Minnesota. OK, we, don't, we definitely yeah. going to touch on that. OK, we're we going to get there. Um, because I think that's so crazy because so I guess essentially you get five years of, is that it? Do you get to play five? Wow. Okay. Definitely. We yeah, definitely going to get there. Wow. That's crazy. Um, so with that all being said, when did you find your love? When did you know that you had something with basketball? Oh man. Uh, that's a good question. When did I know I had something or when did I find out I loved it? <laughs> Cause let's it's probably both. a difference for me. Cause I was yeah, let's, go, let's, let's go both. Man. Let's, let's go both. Okay. Yeah. When I, when I found out I loved it, um, I think, I mean, which I, I hit a little bit at probably seventh grade. I hit a little bit of adversity in seventh grade minor. Like, you know, you don't, you don't make the team type adversity. I was, uh, gotcha. the AU gotcha. team I was on, I was really small. I didn't grow all my, you know, all my friends is on the, uh, on this team. We're going back to this team and they didn't want me back. And, you know, I like obviously was hit at the time. That's the end of the world when you're 13, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I had the choice either to, you know, I could find a new team and I had to play against all my friends or, or you know, I could, you know, not play AU or because at this time I, I was good. I was really good. I was one of the better kids in the area, but I was just small. So, you know, at that time I was kind of like, you know what? I really, I really love playing basketball. I want to work to get better at it. It's something that I really want to be good at. And that's when I really knew, like, I love basketball. Like, I knew that's when it registered to me that I love basketball. You know, How tall were you back then? I just always wanted to be in the gym. Oh, I was 5'3". Five, 5'3", three. Five, three or something like that in seventh grade. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, like, again, all, all my friends now that I'm still friends with to this day, it's been a blessing. Uh, I was going up to their shoulders. Like, I was I was tiny. Like, I, I, was, I was really small. Um, so yeah, so you know, you you love it being in the gym when you're a kid, you know, going with my brother, my dad, whatever. But then that's why I really I knew I really love it. And I knew that I could make money doing it. Probably when I got to be I knew I could make money doing it probably when I was like in tenth, eleventh grade, when I grew. I, I got to about six feet by tenth, eleventh grade. And I was going to, you know, the LeBron camps or whatever, Nike camps, yada yada yada. And I was like, all right, I I could make money and then I think by my freshman year of college is when I really knew I like I had something like I was like, all right, like after going into my sophomore year, I was like, all right, if I work at this and put the time in, like I could play with all these dudes, I could compete, right. I could be better than all these dudes. So I knew. So, that. so because, OK, so when you say that you knew you can make money, you know, a lot of times and, you know, I'm not going to speak for you, but I know, especially around mm -hmm. my area and growing up in the inner city. We think if it's not as a kid, we think as if it's not the NBA, you can't do anything. So did you know about all the other leagues during that time when you said that you can make money or did you just or did you think that you were you were good enough just for the NBA at that time? I, I thought I thought the NBA for sure. Like okay. and honestly, we, we I was fortunate enough. We went on a trip overseas and I still I didn't really know the magnitude of the money you can make overseas. And uh, we went overseas when I was like 16 years old as an AU trip. And uh, I, like I said, I didn't know the magnitude, but I thought NBA. I, I was NBA, NBA, NBA. I didn't even know what EuroLeague was to my second year overseas for real. Um, oh, wow. But and also when I say when I say make money, I don't necessarily mean literally making money. Um, I just mean that I could be really good at it. It's, so it's kind of a. It's oh, a retroactive statement for me, you. if that I, makes I get sense. What you're I, I yeah, would, no, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I, 
Yeah, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm going to make all this money. I was thinking I'm going to be in the NBA. And obviously, you know that money comes with the NBA. But for me, you know, once and I've realized this now, the older I get where it's become more about money. Like right now, it's pretty, I play basketball for the I love it. Don't get it twisted. I still love it. I still love playing. But now it's more it's more about the money now than it's ever yeah, you got to make a living for um, sure. You got to make a living for sure. Yeah, I mean, you grow up or do whatever, whatever it is. But back then, it was really all about just, man, you just want to be the best. You just want, you want to be, you know, you know how you want to be MJ. You want to be K, yeah, whoever sure. it is, whoever it is, AI, whatever. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. So, so you end up ultimately going to um, the Catholic school that you that you previously mentioned, right? And. So how does it work then? Because we we mentioned we touched on it before that if you're in eighth grade you can play varsity basketball. Does do, does your high school career? I'm sorry. Does does the high school that you go to do they have the eighth grade classes, or do they have middle school in in that building? Is that how it works that you that you're able to play for that team? So so yeah 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 so, some. The middle school is in the building. So for me, I, yeah, the junior high was in the same building as the high school. Um, but there's a lot, the public schools tend to not have the middle school in the high school. So you have to go, I will believe, I will believe, I don't know for certain, cause I, again, I went to private school, but you have to go from wherever you are over to the high school gym to, to practice. Like my guy, Tyus Jones, he was one of the dudes that yep. I know that played eighth grade, eighth grade to varsity. And right. uh, I, I've never, I've never really asked him that, but yeah. Not, not uh, the public schools, the middle school is probably not connected to the high school. Okay. Private so, school, yeah. okay. So now this, so let's just, let's just do it this way. Transition to it. Did you play varsity basketball your eighth grade year? Cause I know that you said that you were a little, you were small in stature and you really didn't hit a growth spurt right yeah. away. So did you play varsity basketball your eighth grade year? No, I did not. I played, I played ninth grade. It was my first year of varsity basketball. So okay, when uh, you were actually at he, the high school. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know that I was good enough to play varsity basketball eighth grade, eighth grade year. I, I mean, I, I could have held my own, but mm -hmm. to me, I don't think I was good enough to warrant being moved up. If that makes sense, like I don't know yeah, that. Okay, gotcha. uh, like if someone would have just been like, "Hey, throw me a bone and threw me out there," I would have been fine. But I don't think I earned that, earned that right to go up there. So, so it was at um, what is it uh? Ben Benadile? Or Ben Ben what is what yeah, was Benil, 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 Saint, Benil Saint Margaret's, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So sorry about that. Sorry for, for butchering the name. So nah. Uh, <laughs> nah, I do too. Benil Saint Margaret. Okay, so you go you end up going to Benil Saint Margaret from freshman year. I'm assuming you went all four years, correct? Yep. Okay, so That's now so. you enter you enter your freshman year. Did the growing start happening, or were you still rather short in stature at this point in time? I was, I was still, I was probably like five, six, five, seven, my freshman year, um, and then I grew after my sophomore year. It's probably when I grew most. I grew like five, I got to like five eleven by my sophomore year, um, oh, okay. and then, and then unfortunately haven't grown, haven't grown much since. But you know, that's <laughs> that's all right though. <laughs> but, no, what are you about six two now? Right, you six two, right? Yeah, I'm about, yeah, I'm about six two, about six six one and a half. I'd say six two with shoes on. That's what I'm. That's okay. what I tell. That's the official height. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. So yeah, grew grew after my freshman year, going to sophomore. Right, so uh, five inches in the summer. So that I mean that that. So let's just your freshman year. How did you play your freshman year when it came? Because now you're in a situation where you are playing against kind of like I don't want to necessarily say grown men, but you're playing against older people. Um, that have that probably have are started to grow into their to their young adulthood bodies. So how did you fare? Man, I, I mean, I did well. I uh, you know at first. So actually, to be honest, when I first my freshman year, I started on the sophomore team because gotcha. again, as a as a small guard, I don't really have a skill set that just really jumps. I, there's nothing that I do that really just jumps off the court at you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's one of those things where it's like for me. The longer I'm out there, the more you'd be like, oh, all right, this kid can play. Like, the, you know what I'm saying? Maybe not the first. I'm not about to go out there and dunk on you. I'm not going to be right, out right. there throwing crazy no-look passes or nothing like that. 
So the first right. game you might be like, all right, he's all right. But by game five, ten, or year two, three, whatever, you can be like, oh, yeah, he's really like he could play. Um, but I did fine. So I started sophomore, and by I think maybe uh, ten games in, I was starting on, on varsity. So um, so it was a it was a pretty rapid progression where I, I was playing really well, and I think I maybe averaged like eight points or something like that. But um, wow! So so wait a minute. Yeah. I love it. So wait a minute. So your freshman year, you started. You, you didn't even start on varsity. You were starting off on a sophomore team, but then started off on sophomore. Yep. But then by ten games in, you ended up starting on the varsity basket on the varsity team. What did right. they see? Were you just not? Were you just fundamentally sound, not turning the ball over? What did they see, or what did they not see in the guy that you ended up starting over? You, uh, you know, honestly, I think it was a little bit. We we went ten deep, and my high school coach he had known me since I was probably eleven, so he knew I could play. Um, gotcha. But I think he again, I think he kind of wanted. He was a little old school. He was a little old school, so I think it was kind of like one of those, a little bit of put him through the gauntlet type thing and see what he could do um, gotcha. and make him earn it. So it's not, it wasn't anything like he didn't know that I could do, but I started getting in the lane. I started getting steals, playing defense, stuff like that. Like, and it was one of those things. Where, like my, my friend at the time, who was also a freshman, he brought him up right away, but he was 6'6", six, six, or he was, you know, he was 6'4", when we were 15 years old. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was one of those things where it's like, all right, I, I just want, I know what you could do. I just want to see you do it, and you're going to do it at all levels before you come up here. So, um, okay. So it was, and then I just had to had to prove it essentially. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so, were you were you still pretty solid as a freshman? Were you always did you always have like a solid build? Nah, nah. I always had, I always had this vein in my arm. That's about it. I got this vein that runs through my arm. So, <laughs> so I always, people that was about people it, always huh? thought I would. I, I've always been cut. But I'm not, okay. I'm never, I was never big. I was never big until I got to Wisconsin. But that was just the things of the, that was a thing at a time in the Big sure. Ten. It was just, you know, sure. football yeah. lifting and stuff like that. And right. Looking right. back now, I hate it. But it's, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, was, I wasn't that big then. I was, I was small. I was small. Okay. So, so now you, you know, you know that you have more, more than, I guess, you, you solidified the starting point guard position going into your sophomore season. And this is when you hit your growth spurt. But also in the summer of your sophomore season, or going into your sophomore season, what did you work on to better refine your game? Oh, going into the sophomore season? Yes. Uh, going into the sophomore season, I was all, all, like exclusively working on finishing floaters and stuff like that. Sure. Um, finishing around the basket, getting in the paint, taking contact, because I was smaller. And, and finishing, and then I've always, always tried to work on my shot. Obviously, you know that's kind of a, you know, my, I think one of the first things when I was a kid, going just going to the park with my dad or whatever. He was, uh, if you can't make an open shot, you can't play in the NBA. Type of like always, you know. I, th I think to this day that still rings in my head when I miss open shots. Like I'm like this dude in my head talking. About, if you can't make, yeah, if you yeah. can't make an open jumper, you can't play in the NBA. Gotcha. Um. So yeah, that yeah that that was it. Sophomore year. Um. But you know, back then, again, it was like it wasn't as much time spent with with skills trainers. It was a lot of playing basketball. It was a lot of open gyms and, and playing, like you know, playing, getting up and down as much as like you know, being one on one. And we, we still did that, but it wasn't right. nearly as much as it is now. I keep trying to tell these kids, man, they don't know, they don't understand how great they have it right now. Man, they man, don't, they don't get it. Like we didn't have. <laughs> You know, we didn't have platforms like 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 this. We didn't have stuff like, you know, nutrition that they have now, different type of recovery things that they have now, people being in the gym working on your skill set in the summer on a consistent basis. We didn't have that. We was getting the ball, meeting up with our friends, and we was doing an open run. That's what we were doing. Man, open run, playing in the driveway. Shoot, I mean, I don't know. If we even did the little. We would do the three on three stuff in the driveway, where you even lowered yeah. the hoop sometimes when you was a kid. Like that. That's how we learned the game. Yeah, that that exactly, was it. Exactly. Exactly. And I, man, I, 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 I yeah. Go ahead, my fuck. No, you good. Go ahead. You good? Yeah, yeah. I, so yeah, I had uh, 
I, I'm, I'm low key. I love watching these kids play now. It's like you know how everybody talks the old heads be hating yada 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 like Barkley and them. But right, you know I I love the perspective on both sides because I understand like these kids now they really don't know how to play basketball. Like some like Barkley will call some of these dudes in the NBA dumb, and it's not that they're dumb. It's just the the decisions they make with the ball are 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 not the best based on how we learn the game. Yeah, I think it's based a lack on of how we learn the game. Man. I, d- I definitely believe it's a it, lack of fundamentals. It's not taught anymore. It, it, it's not. It's not. But at the same time, the skill set and the things that they can do with the ball is un yeah. is unbelievable. Like I see in these kids in in nine years old, ten years old. I coached the twelve U again for her team ties this past summer, and even these kids like they're man, they're sidestepping, they're shooting step backs and stuff. And I was like, I wasn't doing that. I was getting the ball going downhill. Maybe I'll shoot a pull up three like. You know what I'm saying? So the things they can do with the ball is is unbelievable. It's incredible. They're athletic as hell. And I think, like you said, the nutrition and the way that they train now. Me and my friend, my teammate now, we always talk about uh, when we was growing up, we did, I don't know about you, we did the jump rope with the shoes, with the, with the plat, yeah. Tearing up our calves and probably our yeah, back yeah, and yeah, all that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, now they got the they got the core work and they got all the access on the internet where you can go find stuff, find different information. Um, they got, they got, which they is got a gift so and a curse too. They got, they got the gun, they got the, the the gun shooting machine. They have all type of massage guns and um hyperbolic chambers, all type man, there's so much different stuff that these kids got now, it's ridiculous, man. But um sometimes I just wish back, you know, I, I think back and I'm like Damn, why did not I, why did I grow up in this time? Why couldn't I have grown up <laughs> during, this, during this particular time yeah. to get some of this training and stuff that these kids have? So, um, so now you know we're we're going into your sophomore season. Were you were you getting looks? Were you getting recruited? Is this when was the time frame that you started getting recruited? And I'm not talking yeah, about I, I'm I start- just talking about in general. Sorry about that. I'm just talking about in general. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, I, I started getting recruited really going into my sophomore year, right? Right when I hit that growth spurt, uh, really things took off for me um, as a player. I, I started, get, I think the first ever offer I got might have been Wisconsin Green Bay at the time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, think I, got, I think I got an offer like right after my freshman year from Wisconsin Green Bay. Okay. And Wait a minute, you got an you know, offer started, or did you get a letter? I got an offer right after my, wow. going into my sophomore year. Might have been, okay. I can't remember the exact time frame. It was somewhere before beginning of sophomore year, whatever it was. But um, and then my sophomore year, probably the best thing happened. You know, I told you about my teammate who was six five, six six, um, and he also ended up going to play D one too. Howard Pulley, the AU team in Minneapolis, uh, one of the bigger the Nike team. They came to they actually obviously knew who I was, but they came to watch him play at our at one of our games. And I ended up having like 25, 20, 25, whatever it was. And then from that point on, they're like, oh, yeah, we got to have him too. So it was both of us that went and, and played over there. Because, um, again, I was still relatively small. But, um, so yeah, so I ended up having a good game and I came to watch him play. And then after that, after that summer is when I started, you know, getting, you know, Notre Dame and all them Penn State and some of the bigger schools started coming around recruiting me and stuff like that. That's so crazy because a lot of people don't understand that you know, the way a lot of, the way, you know, a vast majority of athletes start getting recruited is because you have scouts and stuff in the stands that are there to see the highly touted person. And then someone yeah. else ends up having a pretty decent game, either against that person or someone on the same team or the opposing team. And then they mm. start receiving interest and stuff like that. So that's crazy that you mentioned that because I, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. Um, was if it was a situation where you started getting recruited because, once again, it was about your stature. You get what I'm saying? So I was going to ask you, was it because someone came to see one of your teammates or someone came to see someone else, and then you ended up getting drafted? So it's it's ironic that you mentioned that. So how did you fare overall then your, um, your, your, your sophomore year? My sophomore year was, was, uh, I mean, for lack of, I guess, breakout year in terms of high school, I think I, aver- I think I probably averaged like 20, 20 something, 26 and seven or something like that. Like, 
Matter of fact, I wish I wish triple doubles were a thing back then too, because I would have been trying. I would have been chasing them triple doubles the same way back then. You know what I'm saying? So, but but uh, um, no, I fare well, man. And honestly, looking back on it, it was I, I was always fortunate the situations I was in, because I played with older older kids, and you know me and again me and my teammate were probably the two most talented. We were the two most talented players on the team, but you know we were able to kind of grow and blossom because them dudes were so cool with us, man. They always, even, even our freshman year, our seniors every year were always, they always were trying to help us get better, help us grow as players. And, you know, they were never like in the way, uh, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it was, it uh, was, again, for lack of a better term, which I don't think people really understand how helpful that is, especially when you were nah, kids. Exactly. Um, that, no, it's, it's super helpful, especially if you have upperclassmen and you have people that you kind of quote unquote look up to, that are, that's giving you like the confidence that you need in order to push forward. Because sometimes it's one of those situations where, you know, they are looking at it like, man, fuck out of here. This is my senior year. I got to get my shit off. Man, or they, man, they, maybe I got to get my shit off. Right, exactly. Which, which, which is understanding. And they weren't, they weren't D1 basketball players. There's a couple like D2, D3 basketball players in there, but um, it was dope because they were, they were trying to compete. Like they were trying to, Every drill, they were trying to show us something, but at the same, it was never on on like hating, no hating shit or anything right. like that. It was always just on some on some competitive stuff, which you know was uh, I think looking back on it, it was always it was it was super dope to have that uh, growing Definitely. up. So. Definitely. So I kind of want to like speed, you know, like speed to your senior year because from your senior year, you know, you ended up uh, becoming Mister Basketball in the state of Minnesota, and you know, averaging what you average twenty two. Seven assists. Did you? Did y'all win the? Y'all won a state tournament that year, right? Yeah, we. My junior year, we lost in the state title game, and then senior year, we won it. You won it your senior year. So just looking back on that, right, and just thinking about the aspect in which your seventh grade year, whatever year it was, you end up getting cut. Your freshman year, mm -hmm. you started off on sophomore, and you pl didn't play as varsity until your tenth until like ten games in, and now all of a sudden you are Mister Basketball, not in the conf but in the state of Minnesota, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like it's only one person every single year that can hold this moniker and hold this accomplishment. So looking back at that and thinking about everything that you went through to get there, did you feel like? Okay, I'm supposed to. Be, this is this is where I'm supposed to be, or or was it almost like okay, now I still have more to, to prove because of this? Uh, you know, honestly, I really, I really wasn't like I was. I was hyped. I was hyped, and I was grateful. Grace saw that. Don't get it twisted. But Mr. Basketball Minnesota was never like it wasn't the. It wasn't I, by no means was it uh, the top of the mountain or anything like that for me. It was just kind of like all right, it's kind of something that you wanted to check off. Um, right. on your way because it's okay. like again Minnesota is a great basketball state don't get it twisted we have a we have a lot of talent and all that um but I knew by that time I had been to like I said been to LeBron camp I had been to Nike camps I had been on the circuit I had been playing against you know Isaiah Thomas had given me had given me and my guy 40 at Pete's Jam <laughs> the summer before you know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I knew what was out there. And I like I had kind of been through this thing where I'd been through humbling experience. I had great experiences where Willie Warren from oh, who went to Oklahoma gave us 45 and gave us 45 at Peace Jam. I played against, you know, Kyle Singler and, and Kevin Love. I played against Derek, Derek Rose and Eric Gordon with Mean Streets. And that was probably one of the most humbling experiences that I had, had ever experienced seeing those How two in the fair? backcourt coming at you. How did you I mean, I, I, I held my own. I, 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 I fared. I, they were old. They were a year older than me, so I was playing up, and I, I fared as I fared about as well as about as well as you could think, man. I, cause I stayed in front of them some, you know what right. I'm saying? But, like, right. but no, I, I did all right. So it was. Um, it, I had been through all those experiences, um, so it was just kind of something to check off, and it was almost like. That was almost something my dad had kind of helped me orchestrate because after my freshman year, I wanted to transfer to go play with the same friends that by the time I grew, my same friends that I didn't make the team with on the yeah. seventh grade team, they yeah. all transferred to the same high school together. And I wanted oh, wow. to go transfer with them. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to go transfer with them. 
And I almost did. I met the coach and my dad pretty much sat me down. I was like, look, you could go play with them and have fun or you could stay here and you could leave a legacy and, you know, do your thing and mm -hmm. kind of forge your own path. And mm -hmm. I'll never forget that conversation. And my dad to this day thinks I never listened to him because I'm kind of I'm hard headed, a little bit stubborn or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I really I remember that conversation. I decided to stay at the school I was at. And, you know, it kind of played out exactly the way he, he that's said. Dope, it bro. No, that's that's definitely dope for sure. So now we now we had a situation, you know, where you you coming off of Mr. Basketball in the state of Minnesota, you coming off of a state championship, um, and you ended ultimately signing with Wisconsin. But before we get there, who else was recruiting you? Oh man, so Notre Dame, Penn State, Iowa, Dayton. Gordon, I'm sorry, real quick, one, uh, one, one more question, real quick. What, where were you ranked in the um, during that year in your class? before we get there yeah yeah so most of the year i was ranked about in the 90s like i think 93 or 99 i can't remember which number it was i think by mm -hmm. the time it was all over i was probably like around 110 or 115 something like that um but yeah i was i was at 99 90 something for for from what was it, the beginning of my junior year probably to like mo through most of my senior year uh, so I wasn't like a, I wasn't a highly I mean I wasn't a highly touted prospect or anything like by any means. Um, wait, but wait, wait, wait. No, it, man. if you if you are in the upper if you are top one fifteen of all the college basketball players in the country, regardless of if it's on the ESPN top one hundred, because that's the list that everybody that's the benchmark, right? Is the ESPN yeah, top one hundred? Right. But if you're one ten, one fifteen, you just missed the list. On, bro you still yeah you still were highly touted look i i look at it i look at it as a, everything's perspective right so it's uh sure. to be honest one for one them lists don't matter they never really matter to me they still don't matter to this day like i think honestly i think the difference between 50 and 90 is slim and i think a lot of those times like when when you're a kid they matter more i always try to kind of i really tried to ignore them but like the 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 margins of talent, even to this day, from pro, if you're not LeBron James, so LeBron James is the one, the two, the one through 25. Right. And then Don't probably matter. after that, maybe like, yeah, probably maybe after that, maybe like 25 to like 50, okay. But after that, it's really just, I don't want, it's, it's almost a crapshoot, like timing, health, uh, situation. Yeah. All that stuff really, really matters for the people after that. Um, so I yeah, like, I don't I don't be tripping about about any of that. And it's great to be in those lists and all that stuff, but I mean you know you could play, like all of us, most of us know we could play. So sure. so the number don't really matter. Um sure. Yeah, but um so yeah, so like I said, and then for me, but I'm always trying to be the best. Like I'm holding myself to the highest standard. So 115, relatively speaking, is not you not highly touted. So that's that's why I say that. I get um, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I'm, you know, of course, I'm I mean, just it's still like, an accomplishment, yeah. No, nah, because, you know, you you as, you know, the player that you are and the heights that you have gotten to, you know, you can look at it that way. Like, I wasn't highly touted because of the spot that you are currently holding and the spot that you're in right now. For the average fan listening to this and for the people who haven't played at the highest level, they're looking at it like, yo, Jordan Buggin, he won 12, he... That's that's great. Like when you think about all the high school basketball players in the in in the country that that graduated in two thousand and eight, like they looking at it like yo he tripping. But I get what, but yeah. I get exactly what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. So you were saying that you know you were saying you were going through the list. You you, you mentioned uh, Penn State, Notre Dame, Wisconsin. Who else? Uh, Penn State, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Dayton. Like I said, Green Bay, Iowa um like utah state but and it, it ended it ended really quickly because i hated i hated the recruiting process like could not stand it like it was i thought it like every everybody else says they love it they love going through it oh, i could not yeah, stand yeah. it i couldn't stand it because i just felt like to me it was just so phony like it was so it was just, just like such a, a phony process of uh I, like looking back on it, I guess I could put it into words. Like it's a phony process of like dating. And actually one college coach put it like that. He was like, oh, this is like, this is like we're dating. And I thought he was the weirdest dude in the world. Like, what are you talking about? Like dating, right? And 
I'm 15 years old. He's talking about dating. But I hated sitting on the phone with people telling them, oh, yeah, like, you're going to be this, you're going to be that. Partially because I would talk, like, I grew up in the gym around, like, other guys. Like, Chris Carr played in the NBA. We played, grew up in the gym with, like, Troy Hudson. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I knew Troy Bell. Like, all these dudes that we had come through. So I knew, I, I, get, I got to ask them about their experience. So what they had told me and what I was hearing on the phone wasn't exactly, like, lining up all the time. Mm -hmm. Got you. So I was just like, these dudes are kind of full of it. And that's what made me choose Wisconsin. And I got to give, because it's a Wisconsin podcast, I got to give Coach Guard a shout out. Like Coach Guard was the most genuine dude that I've ever, I've ever come across from, from the really? time I met him. Like I'll, I'll never forget, yeah, when we won the state title back in when I, my senior year, he was in the hallway behind after when I came out. He was at the game and I committed obviously at the time. But from the time I was a sophomore, when they started recruiting me, this dude would sit on the phone with me for an hour, like like it was a podcast almost, like, and we would just talk right. about basketball. True. And he would literally he'd tell me what I need to work on, what I need to get better at, if I wanted to play at the D one level. And mm -hmm. this was before this was before they offered me or anything. He was he didn't say they were going to offer me nothing like that. This man, he didn't know oh, me so from he Adam. Just had, wow, he was just having conversation before the even. Wow, that's dope. That's dope. He, he, yeah, he was just like, he was like, I, and he, he always kept it real with me from the time I met him to the time I got on campus to the four years I was there to this day when I text him now. Like, he's him and obviously Coach Ryan too, and Coach Moore. Shout out to Coach Moore and, and Coach Close as well. But Coach Gar was always, always, always real. Like, he's like, you know, you obviously don't get you that, have, man. You don't get that a lot. Listen, <laughs> it, it, it was, it was, it was like that. To me, I feel like, I'm I'm a I'm a genuine person. Like I'm a I try I'm a real person. I'm a genuine person. I feel like I can read that energy from people. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like people can read that energy from me when I'm when I'm reciprocating it. Nah, for um, sure. So so Coach Guard, yeah, man, he was it was always like he was like I mean of course you know if you want to come to Wisconsin you have to grow. If you don't grow you're not gonna come come to Wisconsin. And he would tell me that straight up. Like maybe not in those specific words, but no, but he, you know he, what he was, was getting you know, to. Yeah, I, I knew exactly what he was saying. He was like, "You got to do this. You got to be strong. You got to be this." And he was like, "We'll just see." He's like, "We want." He's like, "I like you, but we'll just see. We'll see how you progress." And yeah. that, but he would call, check on me. It's probably I, I can't remember. Maybe once, once a month at the time. But as a 15, 16 year old, I was like, "Man, like this is." I, I appreciate that. Like I really, wow, I really that's appreciate dope, bro. That. Like, like I said, man, you don't get that shit, man. Like even from, even in high school. Like no. you don't even get that in high school. That's crazy that you mentioned that, man. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So you end up signing to Wisconsin, but before we get to before we get to Wisconsin, I got some rapid fire questions for you. All right. So it's kind of like yeah. almost like a this or that. If you can't mm -hmm. answer the question, you got to take a drink. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, and I'm gonna start off light real quick. So favorite player growing up? Kevin Garnett. Uh, because of Minnesota? Yeah, it, it's a tie. Ke yeah, 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 it's a tie. Kevin Garnett and AI. Okay, bet. Okay. Um, Jordan or LeBron? LeBron. But, really? but but we got we got we got yeah. But I I got to be able to explain my my situation because to me you got to be able to to explain your stance on that these days. But Go ahead. We can, I'll, you, oh, you want me? Okay, so. I grew up, I'm 14 years old when Bron came in the league. Um, when Jordan came in the league, or when Jordan, I wasn't born, he's finishing when I'm seven, eight. Right. So if we talking about the GOAT, I think the, what goes into the GOAT, it has so this much more to do. No, we, we're not even necessarily talking about the GOAT, but we're talking about, but no, go ahead. No, I want to hear this though. I want to hear this. So, so if we talking about the GOAT, we talking about so many things beyond just basketball and so many things that kind of are outside that individual's control, in my opinion. So it's like, I read the book, uh, Phil Knight's book, um, can't remember the name of it right now, but the the, or the Nike origin story, where it's like, it was all, and this, this other book, Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers, he talks about timing and yada, yada, yada. Jordan blew the NBA up. He's, he's the NBA poster child. Like he blew, you, you can't really compete with that. Like when Jordan was coming up, Nike was coming up. Those two coincided and it created this synergy that is will never ever be probably will never ever be matched. 
Can I ask you something real quick before you finish? Did you know Jordan yeah. had a chance to sign with, um, he was going to sign with Converse? Yes. They talked okay. about it in the book. They, 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 talked oh, wow. about, okay. they talked about it in the book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So Jordan signed with Nike. Jordan, you know, obviously his performance was is crazy. As a basketball player, he's crazy. But, right. you know, just with that, um, the fact that the NBA had to use Jordan to kind of to improve its brand, to to grow its brand, like he he was it. He was at the time. At that time, he was it. And then obviously him winning the six championships played into that. But now, again, with timing, you never hear about Jordan's shortcomings in the playoffs. Never. Okay. Retroactively. No one talks about it. Like the fact that this man, like even I think it was uh, Al Harrington just went on a podcast, went on um Brandon Marshall's podcast and he talked about LeBron playing against his little like beating his little homies like Jordan and he talked about how oh he wasn't doing Paul Pierce like that and yada 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 and Jordan never I don't oh, think Jordan won a playoff I saw, I saw a clip of that yeah and I don't think I don't think Jordan won a playoff game against Larry Bird like I don't he not didn't. a series I don't think he won a no, game he didn't. he didn't so it's like and like he didn't beat Isaiah like he didn't beat any of these dudes and it's just like like what are we doing? Well, until he got Pippen, and then he beat Isaiah. But they was at the tail end of the yeah. They yeah they all right they they was yeah they was that whatever. So it's like and that's not to say anything about you. But it's like this whole this whole uh, narrative about winning makes you the goat and all that. Like everybody loses. If Katie doesn't go to the Warriors, does LeBron win more championships? Like we can sit here and do that. There's just the point is there's just so many circumstances. That go so into winning. Yeah, exactly. There's so many moving parts that have nothing to do with the individual, like, and it's just like to me, Jordan's a goat just because of when he came in the league, um, what he did with Nike, what he did with the Dream Team, um, at the time where the NBA was, like, it, it was unbelievable. Um, mm -hmm. So that that kind of, his legacy is kind of untouchable. The six and zero in the finals, like, that's amazing. So his legacy is untouchable. But for me, LeBron has taken that, taken what the NBA has and advanced it in my era. And he's done all the things. And obviously his finals record isn't, isn't as great or whatever, but. But he's living um, through a social media area, era where he never gotten in any trouble. He's never man, done, you know, it's so crazy, it's crazy. Everything is screwed. Like he, I, I, I'm, shoot, a couple years ago, if LeBron doesn't take the last shot or if he doesn't take over a game, he's too passive. If he goes for 50, then he's just bet. Now, now he's stat pad. And it's just like, all right, bro, like. Like what are we doing? Like can we just enjoy way. both? Yeah, like like what are we doing? So, like I for me Jordan Jordan's legacy is probably greater, um, but to me LeBron. Okay, baby. and I would okay. say the same with football too. So like I I say the same about Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. To me Peyton Manning is better. I mean just Peyton Manning when they played oh, at the same oh, time. Oh, if you if you see an eye test and everything, yes. I agree. When, when when they played at the same time, Peyton Manning had like five MVPs and threw for more yards. I think he had like one or two less Super Bowls, which is a team award. He had three more MVPs. Like mm -hmm. in the time period that they played, Brady's longevity and legacy, le longevity and legacy is untouchable. Right, so. for sure, for sure. All right, Wisconsin or Minnesota? Wisconsin. <laughs> no, see that Minnesota. Do I got a drink for that? Nah, Minnesota. <laughs> you pick two. Which one? Shit. What, what? See what we talk about. I'll go. I'll go. What is your Minneapolis. preference, Wisconsin or Minnesota? What's your preference? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your preference, Jordan? Come on, man. <laughs> That's loaded. I'm going. I'm going Minneapolis. I'll go mini. I'm gonna say okay, Minneapolis. Cool. Cool. No drinking. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> score, score or defend. Score. Okay. Uh, favorite com favorite country to live in? Ooh, wow! Uh, Israel. Favorite country to play in? Ooh, Israel. Okay. <laughs> Toughest player that you played against? I'm say Jacob Pullen. Okay. So. I'm gonna finish this and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to two things that you just mentioned. Okay, favorite hangout spot on campus in on Wisconsin on a Friday or Saturday night. <laughs> Got to give a shout out to the KK. <laughs> okay, so three things then. Um, 
John Clay said the same thing about the KK. <laughs> okay. Um, Deontay Garrett said the same thing about Putin. And he said the same thing about Israel. Yeah. About planning Israel, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He said the exact same thing. He came on the show said the exact same thing about Israel and Putin. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, nuts. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jake, Jake, uh, he's, he, I, that, I don't know. I got a lot to say about that, but it's just his, the way he plays the game, he's like, uh, he, he's got a, I don't want to say Kyrie. That's not a good, that's not a good comparison. No, but he but, can go. Um, he can go. He could play. He's just so smooth. Like he could play at all three levels. Uh, really low key four uh, back, from, like back in the day. Um, Cause I mean, them these logo threes weren't a thing when, you know, when we were coming up, but you know, he could shoot it. He's quick as hell. He's going both ways. He's stopping on a dime. His IQ is crazy. Um, he's smooth, but at the same time, he's physical. Like, is he just has a lot to his game where the fact that he didn't play in the NBA, the older I get, the more I'm like, all right, like that that time and thing, so, something not something not adding up. Something yeah. not adding up for him for him to not be in the league. Uh, it almost it almost made me feel bad. Almost made me feel better. It sounds bad, but it almost made me feel better. Like I was like, damn, like, like I was like, shit. Either it's really tough or or something not adding up. So no, nah, for sure. Like it's and it's so crazy because, um, that Kansas State team with him and um and Beasley, mm-hmm. dude said, listen, and this ain't about him, but we're going to go back to it. Deontay Garrett said again, he was like, man, I remember a game where we played him because, you know, he went to Iowa State. They played him twice, he uh, twice a year. He said, man, uh, Beasley in 20 minutes gave us 26 and almost 20 boards in 20 minutes. Man. And he said, Pullen, and he said, Pullen was just a nightmare. He said, like, that was one of the players that, like, if he, if, if he knew he was playing them the next day, he had to get a, long, a, a good night's sleep. Yep, we played. We played him in the tournament. He had forty. We played. I'll I'll never forget, man, because I knew like it was. Uh, I remember going into the game, it was Sweet Sixteen game, and you know, obviously the media was asking about the matchup, yada yada, and I was really looking forward to it because right. I knew he was from Chicago, and I got and Maywood, yep. and I got family there, so I kind of knew. I knew who he was prior to college, but I'll never forget the first play they won the tip. I think it's Curtis Kelly won the tip. And they just ran a drag screen right across, and we played that contained defense. And I chased over the screen, and you know, I had little tricks. Coach Joe Krabenhoff, who's coach now, he always used to teach me tricks when I was a freshman. He was a senior, and that you could get away with. He came up, pulled up right about right around the elbow, and I kind of, I kind of like smacked him, not like hit him, but kind of touched his cheek as he was going up, and he unfazed. You no, know, most guys were kind of like, hey, like yeah, right, right, unfazed, exactly. nothing, neck, nothing. Run back, didn't even didn't acknowledge the smack, didn't even nothing. And I was like, oh shit. No. Like, and like, uh, you see something like that, this might be a long day. Like, you know how you could just see when niggas is locked in. Yeah, bro. Like, like, locked oh, in, team. bro. Like, ain't nothing gonna phase them. Nothing gonna phase them. Yeah. And yeah, and you just saw that. And that honestly, that was one of the few times in my career where it's like when you see someone so locked in, where you try and kind of I try to like level up. Like I was trying, I, I felt like I was locked in going in. And I try to like level up and meet that. It almost kind of throws you out of whack trying to like, you know what I'm because saying? Because that's like, not because it's giving you it's getting you outside your game. It man, it it, yeah. it was. And it was like and, and fortunately we won the game. Uh I was you know, we were all able to make plays and I made a play at the end, but it was he, he was he he was different. He was different. <laughs> all right, so you arrive, now you now you're on you get to Wisconsin. Um if I'm not mistaken, you played in every single game as a freshman, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. You played, yeah, you played. There was 33 games that you played in. Um, you played about 15 minutes a game. Um, how did you? How did you? First of all, so now you're arriving on campus, and I mentioned it before, but now you're actually playing with grown ass men now, especially in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is a physical ass conference, low scoring, defensive minded conference. They're physical. Um, so it's not it's not like the up and down as it was back then with the Big East and the ACC. It's more yeah. it's, it's, it's ground and pound. We getting it we getting it in, <laughs> inside. We all of that. So how did you fare? Oh man, I, so 
honestly, I put on weight, like a lot of muscle, which I felt like kind of held me back a little bit. Like my knee was kind of hurting. <laughs> like I was, I was like, damn, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to move my shoulders around. They wasn't, they weren't really moving. Wasn't so that was aerodynamic? Like, man at all like i felt like i was always like that that's the thing that always bothers me now is i was like i was always pretty fast like i was fast if there was one thing like point mm -hmm. to point i was fast and it was i was like man i just ain't quite moving the same so i had to chase aj aj abrams off a of screen and i took that first time i was like nah that ain't i was over here trying to get a little giddy up like nah that ain't smacking how it normally does yeah. but it's, it was uh I, no i did all right though like it was it's it's tough at Wisconsin trying to, because it's so system oriented, and you have to learn the system. And honestly, that's one thing that I didn't really account for when Coach Gar. I was so like I just I pretty much I don't want to say, I, I appreciated the recruitment process with Coach Gar, so I didn't really I kind of lost sight of uh, the swing. I didn't know what the swing offense was when I committed. I had no clue. Yep. You know, Coach Gar was dope. I went to a football game. I saw some girls. My dad really was like, let's see. Let's break down the board. Let's break down who's going to be there when you get there and see what the the, the breakdown is going to look like as far as players. Sure. And it was like, all right, well, you know, if you do your thing, you could play as a freshman. You could start really doing your thing as a sophomore. No one, he knew. And that was it. I didn't know the swing, none of that. So, um, so considering all that, and at the time too, I don't think, I mean, me, a lot of guys, I don't think really looked at fit as much as dudes do now. Like they're not, right. they weren't as worried about the offense. It was like, oh, right. I'm gonna go play and figure it out. So, okay. but I, but I, yeah, freshman year, I, I think I, I think I did solid. And obviously could have done better, but I think I did solid. So, 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 so saying all of that then, do you, and, and we, of course we're going to get to the rest of your career, <laughs> but saying all of that, do you, do you think if you could have did it all over again? And I, I don't like doing this because me personally, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, I don't do regrets. I don't regret anything that I did, no, but I agree. doing it all over again, would you have reconsidered possibly? So I think if, again, time and matters is a, is a big thing for me, time and matters. And yeah, I think, I think now, like I probably would have, the way I played in high school, I probably would have gone like somewhere on the West coast would have fit my game better. Mm -hmm. Like somewhere you could pitch it. Yeah. Up like somewhere where you could pitch it ahead, get it back, play a lot of drag screens like that. Like that was my game, um, you know, coming out, but at the same time, all the, like you said, I don't, I don't like regrets either, but you know, we're human. We like to, it's the, the what if game does. What if come game, in. yeah, for yeah. sure. That's all it is, is what if, yep, for sure. Yeah, so, but yeah, definitely, definitely, um, I don't wanna say reconsider, but I think the the circumstances would have been, would have been a little different probably. But okay. that being said, Coach Guard, the way they played this year, I like, I, I can't, listen, I, I can't give enough love to Coach Gar because the way what they did this year and the way they played, they weren't running that swing. They weren't. I mean, they did a little bit, but the what way he did can't. offensively with them, you cannot with not with not with him there. No, 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 no. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you can't. You, I mean, you got you got to change it up a little bit. And what they did this year with Johnny Davis and and Chucky and saying. Brad, you can't, you can't do it with Johnny there, bro. You cannot. Yeah, run that swing with, yeah, you got to let him go. Well, but the thing the thing is though, I think they I think that's also at the same time. Like I think Johnny would be would be fine in the swing because I think he's a bigger guard. So with the, all the inverted post ups and all that, like in the way he okay. can step yeah. out, like that that's really what the swing was intended for was bigs that can step out and guards that can post up. So he would be fine, but I think what they did with him this year really showed everything that he could do for the next level, which I think was dope. Yeah, for sure. So. So now we're going into your sophomore season. You know, you once again you played in all thirty-three games. Um, you ended up starting though half of the season, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. But did, yep, yep. That, was, was that more towards the end of the season that you ended up starting, or was that the first half of the season? So that was that was a circumstantial thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> time and John John Lure uh, broke his broke his hand. I think I can't remember exactly what he broke. But yeah, John broke his hand, and we went we went with three guards uh, at the time, and then you know, I, like I said, it's a opportunity presented itself, and I was able to play well in that situation. So really honestly, yeah, yeah in, that, in that scenario, it wasn't really anything that I did. It was more just you know, I guess unfortunate for John and uh, opportunity for me. I was just gonna say, and then when the opportunity presents itself, because you go you you increase your your minutes per game almost. 
You go from yep. what was like 15 to 30 minutes a game, and then you increase your scoring by almost 10 points a game. So just like yep. you said, the opportunity presented itself a little bit better. Um, how, how well did y'all do your sophomore season? Do you remember? Yeah, we well, we ended up, I think we finished like third in the Big Ten, and uh, we, what are we, losing the second round of the tournament, I think? Okay. We lost to oh yeah we got we got blitzed by Cornell. <laughs> we got blitzed. We won we won our first round game and Cornell ended up the defense we played again. Yeah, it was, was Cornell. Cornell? Yeah, because okay. we would have played okay. we would have played Kentucky the next game if we would have won. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And they just the the way they played they just tore our defense up. They were hitting all the floaters mid range. They had this cat Lewis Dale. And a matter of fact, another cat I knew growing up from Minnesota, this kid Ryan Whitman, and okay. all of them had big games against us. So. Okay. So. Now we you know you're in a situation now where you you're kind of. Did you know going into your junior year that you were going to be starting every single game? Because, you know, I know at the end of the season, the coaches send you, sit you guys down, every single player down individually. You have your end of season meetings and stuff. What was the feedback that you were getting coming off your sophomore season going into your junior year? Um, so pretty much. So honestly, I don't, I don't really recall the feedback sophomore year as much as I do my freshman year. I, my freshman year, the coaching staff, they they ripped us apart. Like, they came in. Coach Close came in. And I, it was probably, you know, you have one of the, what the people calling them core memories now or whatever. And it's like he came, he came, he came in our locker room because we almost missed the tournament. We were like the 12 seed, just barely got in my freshman year. And okay. he came in and was like, he went around the room or, and literally was like, I don't remember what he said to everybody. I, I recall what he said to Ryan Evans. He said, Ryan, you in the gym, you in here shooting for two hours and you're not doing shit. Like, he, was like, he told Ryan, like he told him that. He told me like, Jordan, you get out there and so you can do all this. And sometimes you play like you don't want to be out there. And we took you over Corey Lucius, like yada, yada, yada. And he's like, and he like he he kept it all the way real with us. Like and he was like, you got to do this, like this, this, and that. Shout out Corey, um, that's my man too. Shout out Corey. Yeah, man. yeah, and I, <laughs> right. To, and I, I don't know. I don't, Right, Corey, and I don't want to come sure. I mean, Corey probably chose Michigan State over over Wisconsin too. So maybe you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. Corey, Corey might tell the story different, but um, no, nah, he was on. He already told it already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. So and again, Corey's one of them dudes too. Growing up, where he was oh, man yeah. at DTA, he was he was yeah. like that. He was like yeah. that. But um, but but either way, yeah, going into my junior year, like just knowing I had all that feedback, I, I kind of knew. And this was a part going back to what my dad had done in, in high school, where he had kind of laid the board out. Like I knew Trayvon was obviously going to be graduating, um, so I knew also, for sure. Real quick, Jordan, because just to clarify this, because I'm thinking that he did it like more so just for like maybe your freshman. He he did this for your whole entire four years at Wisconsin. My, my 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 dad my father's a financial advisor so he has an analytical mind makes sense so now. He, nope, it makes sense <laughs> he, he has he has a he has a whiteboard in in this room in at the house and he put down every player what year they were when I was a senior in high school all the recruits that he knew were coming in at the time and he slotted them in at certain places where they were going to obviously when they're graduating and he was like this is when you could do this this is when you could do this and he, he, he was a baseball player. He didn't know basketball like that. So when he break down basketball, even going into my junior year, he was like, oh, man, you average 10 points a game this year. If you could hit two threes here, make four free throws here, you know, get to the basket here, you could average 18 points. And I'm over here looking at this dude like, nigga, it's what? I was like, what? <laughs> but it was, and I, I always thought he was crazy, but you know, I heard somebody else the other day break it down like that. I think I, I don't, I don't want to go. No, I, no, it might have been MJ. And, and Shaq, Shaq Penny, and or Shaq Kenny and, and Chuck do it on inside the NBA all the time. Where they talk about if you can get seven points here, seven points, in seven the points here. Yeah, yep. That, okay, maybe that's where I heard it. That's maybe that's where I heard it then, and I was like, I heard them saying, I was just like, ain't that about a bitch? Like, and this, like, this dude. damn, Pop knew what he was talking about. <laughs> man, man, like, I always thought that was so crazy, and uh, you know, but going, I, I to this day, I still laugh because my junior year, probably my best year, um, that's, it was. that's how it played out. Yeah, statistical wise, it was your best year. You, you averaged, you know, you 
He only set out three and a half minutes a game, 43% field goal shooting, 42 from three, 83 from the free throw line, 18 points a game, four assists a game, four rebounds. Um, yeah. Were you getting any NBA buzz at that time? Yeah, that's I would so I was gonna leave. There was a lockout that year after after the season. We lost to Butler, and you know, for me as a kid, like again, you want to play in the Final Four, like everybody else, you want to do all that stuff. Yep. So when we uh, played, but we lost to Butler, and it was probably like me and John combined probably had the worst game that we played together the whole year. I think we might have gone like seven for thirty five from the field or something like John that. Lord, you're talking about right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, like, so I, I just had a sour taste in my mouth and I'll never forget going in and I talked to uh, this guy, Kevin Bradbury from BDA and he was and like, he was like, you should leave. Like I was going to sign with the, with the agent. And I, he's like, you should leave. And I was, the feedback I was getting was like late first to late first to late second, pretty much. So you no, know, knowing now is like, if they're saying late second, there's a chance you could be undrafted, right, too. So I remember Jay Billis though. You know where Jay Billis had you pegged at? Do what? I didn't even know. Uh, early second. Early second. Yeah. Okay. So, w whatever it was, like I, I got the ranges. I was ready. I was really ready to leave. And the lockout. My dad is a, again analytical guy. He's a school guy, and right. he convinced me. He doesn't know that he convinced me that you know I could go back and he'll just do it again. Like he'll just do the same thing again. And uh, <laughs> and and then he was like, the lie, if you do go early second, you know, or whatever, late mid second, it's like with the lockout, you're not going to get the same opportunities at training camp. You might end up overseas, yada, yada. Because John ended up, it was his senior year and he got drafted. Um, and I hope he's cool. Like um, he ended up getting drafted 40 or whatever, 38 to the Bucks. And he ended mm -hmm. up going overseas and came yep. back to training camp and made the team. Um, so it was just one of those things, again, Timing is a big thing. Where if there was no lockout, for sure, I think I would have I would have left. Um, but you know, thing everything just it just it just felt it felt right going back at the time. And unfortunately, yeah. after that season, I had I started dealing with some injuries and stuff like that. But yeah, I, would, I definitely considered definitely strongly considered leaving my AAU. My AAU director was like Renee Pulley. He was like, "Oh, you gotta go. You gotta go." Um, it's funny that you mentioned that name earlier because I was thinking like Pulley and I'm and I thought about Jacob too. I said I'm thinking, are they related? That's what I thought when you you said it the very first time earlier in the interview. I was like, are they related? Yeah, no, 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 Pulley and Pullin. Yeah, yeah, it's Pulley, Pull, P U L L E Y. Okay, got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, so real quick, um, before we get to your senior year, it's time for some highlights, man. I want to show some of your highlights, <laughs> and I just want you to react to this. Can you see this? Not yet. Okay, hold on one second. Got you. Can you I see it now? Yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> All right, I just want you to react to some of these, man. <laughs> Big guard against Indiana. <laughs> yes, sir. Faster. <laughs> so I had a little hezzy in there. I was mm -hmm. still big, too. I was like, still big. I wish, you know, wish I would have been a little smaller. Might have been jumping a little better. Really? <laughs> How, how, yeah. how what were your measurables at this time? Not, ooh, man, nice reverse. Yeah, John. John was John was yeah. nasty. John probably one of the most underrated. If his name was John Lurkovich, he probably if he had a Vich at the end of his name, <laughs> that was Victor Oladipo right there too. Victor yeah, could get, the, get that work. <laughs> yeah. What were you, what were your measurables, yeah. uh, Jordan, at this time? What were like? Oh man. So at that time, probably I can't remember. I think my stand invert was probably like thirty three. My approach is probably like 37 and a half, 38. That was mm -hmm. Ohio State game was fun, man. And this Indiana game. I remember this Indiana game, uh, Doc, River, <clears throat> Doc Rivers was in the crowd. I was like, I remember looking over there sometimes when I was scoring and be like, hey, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Doc, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see me, Doc? <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was one of the most BS shots I ever hit in my life. Hey, Draymond That's right fun. there. <laughs> It don't matter. Shoot. I remember that move on Lewis Jackson. That was right after the Ohio State game. And uh, Coach Ryan was on his motivational stuff. It was like, Jordan, I know you just had a good game against Ohio State, but get off the bullshit today. I was like, damn, man. Like, <laughs> uh, so. Let me live a little bit. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, it's crazy watching all these and you see all I these was just dudes post-college. 
I was going to ask you how you feel watching some of these highlights too. Man, I, I remember I, I can't jump. I can't jump and finish with the left like that no more. I wish I could. <laughs> All these injuries I'd have had. <laughs> I mean, you know, so uh, what's crazy? I think I may have seen you dunk in a game, maybe once, maybe twice. Yeah, I, I never dunk, and it like, yeah, I, I never dunk. I should, every time I got it on the break, I'd lay it up. Partly because you know I, I don't know, but I was tired or whatever. Like, but yeah, I probably should. But you dunked it maybe once or twice me. at Wisconsin, though, right? Whew, I don't know. I dunked in high school a couple times, but I like I was never a dunker. I like but yeah, I had to the point where people was asking me if I could. But yeah, no. Nah. Now I mean and yeah. I say that because I, I, I didn't see it a lot, but I could have sworn I saw you maybe once, maybe twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot that Iowa game too. My arch our conditioner our athletic trainer swore I had a concussion that whole week. <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> I think I got hit in the head against North. We played like Northwestern or somebody at the beginning of the week, and uh, mm. I got hit in the head or something like that. And I, he swears that I lied about having a concussion. That's funny. But <laughs> but they weren't doing the test like the way they're doing them now either, though, right? Yeah, no, nah, definitely not. Yeah, definitely yeah. not. Sure. But yeah, yeah. My, my measurables. Oh yeah, Ryan. Ryan had hops too off that one leg. Yeah. Ryan had hops. But yeah, no, my measurables was like. Uh, my, my issue too at the combine, I think I tested out like one of the more, like all the things combined. I tested mm -hmm. out, I think like they broke it down on Draft Express, probably like second overall. I always mm -hmm. joke now, like if I was an NFL player, my draft stock would have shot through the roof. That's funny. Uh, shout out my boy Jonathan Zink too. He uh, is, I became friends with him on Twitter. He used to make all them highlights. But um, oh, yeah, my right. problem was I got I got alligator arms, man. I got I'm six six one six two with a six two wingspan. So that's because of all that bulk, man, and that girth. Man, that's what it was, bro. <laughs> man, yeah, shrunk my damn arms for real, <laughs> for real. So you end up going back to first of all. Let me just give you your um, your, your, your kudos, man, because in, in the in 2011, um, you were a consensus second team All American. Congratulations! Uh, first team, first team All Big Ten, um, and then also Big Ten All Defensive Team. Were you first team defensive? There's only one defensive team, so it's like. Oh, yeah. is it? Oh, okay. Okay. At the good. time, good. yeah. At the time, I don't know what it is now, but at the time, yeah. So you 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 getting all of this, you know, you getting all of this, and like you said, you you mentioned that you probably should have left after your junior year, but then you ended up coming back, and um, with with everything that you had in your, you know, in your bag now. With that being said, as far as the first team All Big Ten, All American second team, did you think? It was like, okay, and I know you said your pops laid everything out <laughs> because he was a financial yeah. advisor. Do you think it was like, okay, I know I did this shit last year. I can do this shit again and it's going to be, or did you, in the back of your mind, did you know it was a timing thing as well? Uh, When you're a kid, like you think you, you don't know nothing. You think you're invincible, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, I, I think I understood to a degree like timing and stuff. But at the okay. same time, like I've always been, I've always kind of had like a growth mindset and I've always, you know, I'm always going to bet on myself. So, um, I, you know, I definitely thought I could do it again. I thought, why not? Like, and, and honestly, I think part of part, I, you know, I started getting injured was, was I think my issue. <clears throat> and I'll never forget, even at the beginning of my junior year, I had a, a little foot thing or ankle thing to start the year. And I was trying to play through it and coach close again. He came up to me in the hallway at the call center and he was like, you know, like, Hey man, like stop, stop trying to play. Just sit down for like a week and just get right. Cause he's like, you're good. You're a good player. When you're, when you're injured, you're solid. When you're healthy, you're really good. And he told me that straight up. And, and, you, and you, I'm sorry, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, it was, I was just going to piggyback off of that, but I was getting to your, to your senior year and I don't want to jump anything that you were saying so just go ahead and finish up uh okay yeah yeah so I mean that, that that was pretty much it like he just pretty much said when you're when you're healthy you're a really good player and that's something that it resonated with me at the time but my senior year I just you know I had ankle surgery I was supposed to go play with the U.S. team uh in the junior in the junior goodwill games or whatever and I ended up having ankle surgery um when I, I was you know I was playing a lot that summer I went to the camps with I went to like the Darren Williams camp, Chris Paul camp, all that, like LeBron camp in college again. And um, 
you know, I had a little ankle thing that just never quite got right. I ended up needed surgery. And at the time it was like, you're again, as a young player, like you think your body's just going to recover, which right. is another thing that I'm jealous of now is like, man, these kids, they, they sit out, you know, if they have a, anything like back then, right. it's like you playing, you playing. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's one, that's one, if I did have to pick a regret or something that I wish I could change, I didn't take, uh, I spent a lot of time in the gym. I, I feel like I worked harder than a lot of people, but I didn't take uh, the I didn't take take care of my body recovery. the way that recovery and you know uh, rehab and treatment yep. and I didn't take care of my body the way that that I wanted to. And some of that's bad luck, but some of it's you know you could you could do yourself. But no, um, I got you. so that's one thing. Yeah. Okay, so you know you end up like we said, we, you end up coming back um, for your senior season. Um, numbers were, they were comparable, very comparable to your junior season. Um, points were down by maybe three and a half points or something like that, but everything else across the board was comparable. All American honorable mention your senior year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what other accolades did you get within the big 10? Uh, I think I was all big 10 on the coach, all big 10 first team on coaches and maybe all big 10 second team on media. Or one of the, that's exactly maybe. it. That's exactly yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to see if you remember. Yep, that's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, because I think I was a little salty about the media thing just because <laughs> I, I, to me, I always, but me and my boy getting this all the, my man Trevor Mabakwe, he played in mm -hmm. Minnesota and uh, he played at Marquette in Minnesota, but um, he always talk about, oh, you were on the defensive team. I was like, listen, man, the, the coaches say it, the coaches watch us every, and the coaches in the Big Ten, I swear they don't like Wisconsin. So I'm like, if the coach is putting us on something, then shoot, it, they must have meant it. <laughs> you well, know what I'm saying? well, you know, you know what, you know what, we 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 can we can we can agree with that because we saw the situation that happened with Michigan. So yeah, <laughs> Man, we, right. know a lot of, <laughs> we know a lot of the coaches in, in in the Big Ten don't like Wisconsin, but that's a story for a whole entire different day. Right. Um, so now you have kind of no choice but to see where your draft status and everything is at this particular time, right? Um, what was the feedback or what were you hearing after your pro day? Oh, man. Uh, you know, the after, after the, after, yeah, after the combine, I was hearing that my stock, I know my stock had dropped some. It was probably that I was hearing like anywhere from early second to undrafted now. And okay. You know, I always look back to at the numbers with my ankle and stuff like that. And I knew, I knew what the, it was. It was literally directly related to my shooting percentages. I think my, I think I shot the three like six percent worse my senior year than I did my my junior year, something like it that. It was. It was exactly six percent worse. Yeah, like I mean, that's that's the type of stuff I just don't forget. Forty two point nine to thirty six point nine. Yeah, and that was uh, a lot of that had to do with my ankle. Like I just didn't get the lift. Um, I just didn't have the lift that that I, you know, I had to as a smaller guard that you need to have. So I knew that I had to shoot it better. I knew I had to shoot it well. Um, but with those, with the issues I had, they just I I never really quite figured out how. To, I never sat out, and I never figured out how to get rid of it. So that the feedback I was getting was just that, and it was almost like. I'll never forget. I, I was excited. I realized the combine doesn't matter too much because I shot it really well at the combine. But okay. uh, quick, quick, I'll never forget. I was with Dame Lillard in a lot of the groups that I was in. And okay. I remember thinking how nice he was going to be. Just my mindset was like, damn, a lot of them dudes were sitting out like AD sat out, Kendall Marshall sat out, uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist all sat out. Dame, I think, was one of the few top 10 pick, like maybe the only. That was in every drill. And when I'm talking about he was in there busting people, killing killing yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, he was in there killing, yeah. killing people. Let me ask you this real quick on him, and then we'll get back to you because I don't want to spend too much time on him. But do you think it's because he went to Weber State that he had to do or that he had to show more than everybody else that was at a big high major school? Man, I think maybe a little bit, but I think just now I think it was that Oakland mentality. I think it's where he's Got from. You. Yeah, like, got you. And the underdog. I, the it, yeah, like I, I I've gotten to know a couple people from that area. Like one of his boy, Will Cherry, this cat who went. To, we played him in in the tournament. Went to Montana. Yeah, they Montana. just yeah. I I don't know Dame super well other than the few interactions, 
but just the another dude, Jared Cunningham, like just the way they carry themselves, they mm-hmm. all seem very similar. Like it's all so I yeah, I think it was more where he where he just came up out of. But um okay. yeah, that's that's just my opinion. So you ended up ultimately signing to the Atlanta Hawks uh summer league team, right? Yeah, yep. Signed to Atlanta right after the draft. Okay, so how how did you how did that go and what were you what was the feedback that you were getting after that? Uh Atlanta Atlanta again, I I just I never it, it went all right. It went all right. They gave me an opportunity. Like I got there, they I think they wanted me to do better than I did uh at summer league. Um and Brad Wanamaker was there too at the time, who's now in the league and he's played all over. Um but again, with my like I, my body just never really felt right. And I don't know, most people who play sports know that if your body's not feeling right, it kind of takes something away. Like you're not sure if you can step this way. You're not sure oh, if you sure. can do that. You just don't have all the same swag and the and the confidence in your game. Um, in the in the draft, I, I hired B.J. Armstrong, and I was hearing like I actually wanted to go to Milwaukee just because John was there, and there he was like Milwaukee's talking about taking you at 42, but they ended up taking like Deron Lamb, and I think Utah had like 48 or something like that. Um, but with Atlanta, it just you know, I just I just never was able to. Um, I was just never able to get my my uh, my my swagger back or my um, the same type of movements that I had back that I had my junior year. Even even to this day, it's been it's been real frustrating going through that process. You know, just being injured all the time. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a fun experience though because you got to play. I had Brian Butch in in the in the camp with me, which was kind of dope. That man over there talking about cutting his lawn when I'm trying to figure out how to make an NBA NBA team. Like, I'm like, man, Brian, but shut up, dog. Like, <laughs> like, oh, that's funny, dude. That's, 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 you know what the funny thing is? I've never had interaction maybe once or twice with Brian, maybe once or twice. But that yeah. just seems – wait, have I? I don't know. Anyway, but that just seems like something Brian Butch would do. Just talk man. about lawn cutting and – yeah. Cut about lawn care, and he was—I think he was my like 27 at the time, whatever he was. Like he's removed from—he was—he wasn't—he wasn't he was really tripping about the stuff. Like I'm sweating, right. like damn, I want to make this team. Right, but right, right. um, you know, they had they had John Jenkins was their draft pick, so mm-hmm. it was one of those things too, where like you learn the business of the NBA real quick. Is John out there taking you know shout out John? Yeah, out there taking wild ass shots and all that, and it's just like it's but it's about him. The summer league is about him and him showcasing right. his talent. Right. So you quit. It's it's a hard experience because you quickly figure out that like you know in a matter of weeks, like you the man is all low key all about you a little bit to like damn I gotta readjust and figure out how exactly. to get like I gotta I'm figure out what, what my spot is right yeah like low key I'm a freshman again just like that and it's like right. but I'm a freshman playing against the you know obviously the best uh, some of the best players coming out at the best players in the world in that pool at the time so yeah, for sure. So you ended up ultimately signing with what was it uh, in in um, Italy, right? Um, yep. With uh, Virtus Roma. Yep, yep. Virtus Roma. Yep. Okay, Virtus Roma. Okay. Um, yep. And then you know you you played pretty good, eleven points a game, um, and then you parted ways with them in February. Um, real quick, you know what? Let me let me let me do this real quick. I just want to congratulate you too because I forgot to mention it, but. Aren't you like ninth or tenth, or weren't you ninth or tenth in Wisconsin history for points per game? Yeah, oh, I think it, yeah. Game, points. You passed Devin Harris for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Devin, yeah, Devin only played three years, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was, uh, I think when I left, I think I was seventh, but I know there's been a few people that have passed me now, maybe like Brad. Okay. I know Brad did this year and Nigel and Ethan, so but appreciate it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. But you top ten, so that's just a, that's I needed to I needed to put that out there because, like I said, this is a story. This is a show about bragging and giving people their flowers, man. So I need to just put that out there <laughs> that you top ten in Badger <laughs> history for sure. Um, but once again, you ended up parting ways, and then you signed with the Milwaukee Bucks summer league. Now, yeah, was was John still on the squad during this point in time? John was, was not. So, was so I think so, he was over. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, John was not there. I think John was already in Cleveland by the time. So I, I did my rookie year, I finished. I finished my rookie year. We went to the finals in Italy. Um, and I actually, that was, 
So I played with Atlanta, played my entire year in Italy, and then Toronto really liked me. Brian Colangelo was the GM, and he really mm. liked me. And uh, and he was talk like he was talking like they were gonna give me a, a solid training camp deal, like one of them deals that where I would have a chance to really legitimately make the team. And oh. um, and uh, he got fired, I think, like two weeks before, or maybe two months, month, whatever, month before summer league, and they brought in Masai Ujiri. And Masai gotcha. wasn't really rocking with me the same way that that Brian Colangelo was. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up playing with Toronto that first summer. Uh, I still played with Toronto. And then the next year, I went to I went back to Italy, signed with the same team, and then parted ways in February because I had I realized that the ankle problems I had been having, I needed to have hip surgery. So I had my first hip surgery. Um, oh. Yeah, so I, I had my first hip surgery. Matter of fact, the same surgery that Isaiah Thomas had had, uh, I had that surgery. Wow. And, you know, I, I, it was crazy the way I found out because, like, I, like I told you, my whole senior year, my ankle, my lift, yada, yada. I was like, I couldn't figure out what it was. My knee was bothering me. I had like yeah. I had like five MRIs on my knee, couldn't figure it out, yada, yada, yada. And finally, this doctor took an x-ray in my hip and was like, oh, yeah, you got a hip impingement, yada, yada, yada. So you can either play or have surgery. So I tried to play on it. So really similar to what IT did when he was in Cleveland. Like I tried to... <laughs> Tried to yeah. play on it and by February. I was like, man, like, nah, I just need to get this surgery. Um, and then, so I had, I had surgery in February, like February 21st. And I really like, again, obviously my goal was to play in the NBA, but I tried to come back in like four months. So I played with the Bucks in summer league, you know, four months out of hip surgery, uh, which probably wasn't the best idea, but. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't go as well. Okay. Let me, uh, yeah. once, I, I, I just want to do this again, man. Cause I want to, I want to shout you out and big you up, man. Just some of the, these are some of your pro your pro highlights right now. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, Leon this is one of my favorite spots right here. Okay. <laughs> one of my favorite spots. Yep. This is in the in the French. That one was in the French Cup. They got this dope uh, mid season tournament oh my in. Oh uh, God! Change the direction. In it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Zach Wright, that man guarding. He's a he's a monster too, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! Get up! Yeah. <laughs> get, and then you yeah. point at the ground. Did you see you, you point at the ground? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get a little jazzy, man. Yeah, you got that's to. A, that's a Euro. That's a. That was the most fun I had playing basketball, man. Um, since college, honestly, them Euro League games, and that's Ohio State cat. I got to play with David Lighty. That's my guy. David Lighty. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say that I was Lighty. It's funny that you yeah. mentioned that because one of the, the one of the pictures that I have for your um for your thumbnail for the actual video was uh David Lighty guarding you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was giving him hell all year about how I had to hang twenty seven on them. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, you're you're a league man. That atmosphere, that atmosphere is crazy. It's a lot of fun. It's a and lot this is of like fun. overseas when you think about Euro league basketball this is the closest that you get this in FIBA right is the closest that you get to the NBA over overseas right like the closest I, I type would... atmosphere and everything whoa yeah 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 for sure for sure <laughs> for, man, I, man, I love playing with Lighty Lighty one of my favorite teammates man that dude that that's another dude I can't believe he's not in the NBA I, I can't believe he's not in the NBA yeah Lighty can shoot his ass off too bro Man, but he can, he does everything. Like he's lit, he's a perfect three and D guy. Um, perfect three and D guy. But um, yeah, man, this Tony Parker was our owner too. He's he's the owner of this team. That's dope. So he yeah, this man, this stuff's making me miss your league right now. <laughs> I see. You, man. So 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 I was asking you, Jordan, about like the you know with your league and FIBA about it being comparable to the to the NBA, but just being overseas. You want to just elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so more more so Euroleague. Euroleague is probably um, just the talent level, I would say, is what, you know, you have guys coming from coming from the NBA, coming uh, guys that played in the NBA last year, coming back to Euroleague. Um, the crowd, for one, is, I mean, you see some of these crowds on the video. Ridiculous. Just the, Man, and this like there's a di like right now this is a French league game, right? And the difference between the French league and the Euro league is just the the production, the atmosphere, the talent level. Like I said, uh, like a dude like Mike James, who obviously goes from 
you know, Euro League to go play with Brooklyn. Like you seeing dudes like that night in, night out. Shane Larkin, uh, Nando DiColo. Um, so it just really reminds you of, for one, growing up in the States, you see someone who's a killer every night. Um, and then, you know, the, the bigs are tough. The the pace of the game now is, is getting closer to the NBA. Um, it's still only mm -hmm. a 40-minute game, but... It's just it's just a lot of fun when you get to play with a, a lot of talented players at once. Let me ask you um, how you feel, and I, I, I'm just you know just admiring these these highlights real quick. But how was it playing? I hear so so much about Shane Larkin. Yeah. How was it playing against that dude? Man, he's uh, he's fast as hell. He's fast. <laughs> he's fast. That's what everybody says too, man. That's exactly what everybody says. He's yeah, he's 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 fast as hell. But um honestly it was for someone like that, it's like if he's if you could get phys if you could be physical and kinda try and force him to spots and you just kinda play the percentages. If he's not hot, if he gets hot, it's a wrap. Like ain't nothing ain't nothing you doing with that. But if you can uh, you know, kinda coach coach Ryan used to say corral. He used to say corral dude like that. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, it's gonna be a long night. It's going to be a long, long I, I, night. It seems as if you don't, um, from what I'm looking, that you change your shot up a little bit. You don't go as far behind your head as you know, as you once did. Or am I tripping? Yeah, yeah. No, no. The older the older I got, the the lower it got and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, and okay. I, honestly, it was, uh, you know, it was more a leg thing, but I didn't have the same lift, so I had to get rid of it um, a little quicker. But I think it looks gotcha. it looks better. But honestly, I wish I still had the same like core strength with with this release point. But I think I would be a. But no, it's yeah, something I worked yeah, on man, a lot. I, I just I just definitely wanted to 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 show you some of these highlights, man. This is um as far as like the you know the what what you, what one person would get um in when it comes to the NBA and 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 things like that as far as travel arrangements and as far as you know gear that's to your disposal and stuff like that is it is it pretty much the same as the euro league or i mean i shouldn't say the same because i know you know the nba is the best league in the, in the in the world when it comes to all of that but is it comparable i should say uh yeah honestly the the your, tony was great tony was an amazing owner he uh you know, it was not comparable to the NBA and Euro League. Maybe one team like Cheska, I think they have a private plane and all that as the Russian mm -hmm. team. Um, but no, nah, it's, it's not the closest thing, honestly, to to the NBA is this team that I'm on now is to because our yeah to Toyota. Toyota is our biggest sponsor here, so they have they have the facilities here. Like you go in the gym, we got a chef, we got. You know, obviously your own weight room, gym. We got our own rooms up in the like dorm rooms or apartments, whatever in the in the apartment, oxygen chambers, all that, which is not a normal thing overseas. So, did you sign now? When you sign with um with uh the team right there, is it is it still like for you? Is it year to year or is it do you sign multi year deals right now? So me, I'm I've done year to year a lot. Again, a lot of that has had to do not to keep bringing, but to to it's a lot to do with the injuries. Um, so like oh. this team right here, I tore my MCL last year, so I was mm. coming, and they were kind of they were a little weary about that. So it was a it's a year to year deal. I signed I signed a two year deal. <clears throat> excuse me, I signed a two year deal in Italy, and I signed a two year deal when I went to Germany. Um, mm. but the second year I didn't play in Germany because I had my second hip surgery. So. Okay, how 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 are you doing right now in the season? Um, what are your uh, what are you guys' is like playoff um, aspirations? How is everything going right now? Yeah, it's good. It's good. We uh we won like I think maybe like thirteen out of fourteen or something like that right now. So okay. um, we're favorites. Uh, one of the favorites to win the title this year. Um, so I think we're sitting in like second second or third place in the league. Uh, we had to deal with a lot of injuries, all that, but the season's going well. You know, I'm recovering from my MCL uh, nicely, slower than I want to, but I think that's like you said, uh, some of that age, some of that age coming in. But you know what I'm saying? But yeah, are recover, you, are recover. You, from, are you, then are you sidelined right now, or are you playing? No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Okay. I tore my MCL. This was the end of last year, so okay. I'm probably like ten months out um, from okay. my MCL surgery. But. Um, yeah, so no, we're doing good. We sh we should, if we can stay healthy, we'll have a chance to win a title. And this team here is like, um, 
this is like the the Lakers of Japan or the the Madrid of Spain or whatever like that. So we're the big team here. I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that because here's the thing, bro. First of all, are you are you getting bombarded by fans? Are you on billboards? Are you is is that one? Okay, listen. I'm glad you mentioned that. There is no way in hell. Well, let me just rephrase that. It would take some getting used to for me to be a quote unquote celebrity. I mentioned the same thing once again, <laughs> not to beat a dead horse, but Deontay was telling Garrett was telling me the same thing when he was in Tokyo. That yeah. he was on billboards and everything. And I said, There's no way. There's there is no way that I can be and I think more so I, I, let me say it this way. It would be it would take some getting used to. Yeah, it's it's honestly it it doesn't take too much getting used to here. It's easier here because the language barrier. So it's more Got just it. Like, Got it. like and this 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 is my first year here, so it's just kind of starting now more so than it was at the beginning of the year. Um, but you know, I walk around one of my teammates. He's been here five years, so we go out and it's me and him, and he's seven foot white dude with red hair. Oh. Yeah. And you know I'm I'm the only black dude walking around. So even if they don't know we hoop, they still kind of looking at you like <laughs> people. But but yeah, no, I mean it's dope, especially in uh, Tokyo. Or Tokyo has or Japan has prefectures. So in our prefecture, you know, there's the posters, billboards, whatever, everywhere. And uh, yeah, you walk around, people just kind of look at you. And Japanese people are dope, man. They're so they're so nice and they're passive. But there, but, this is a cool culture. But and that's like, yeah, oh, and, and, and before, yeah, before we get out of here, I want you to touch on that as far as like the culture and how you're adjusting it and everything to the to the culture there. Yeah, no, it's dope, man. Um, honestly, it's it's uh, it's a little Midwest, like in terms of I don't know about Wisconsin, but Minnesota is a little passive aggressive at least. So it's 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 a little passive aggressive, but the people here are really they're really nice. They're really nice people. So. It's kind of it, it builds good habits in the sense that you have to um, you kind of you you're always respectful. You always got to be respectful. You always got to, you know, just little things like you're not leaving trash on buses. You're not leaving trash on the street like yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't even have trash cans on the street, stuff like that. Um, so <laughs> you holding on to your stuff because if you just drop trash, like people are going to be looking at you. People might even walk up to you. Like, hey, like. You got to get that. You know right? <laughs> like, which is like the only time they not passive is when, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, sure. So it, it's dope, man. It's a, uh, it's a uh, very, it's a very respectful culture. They have this thing, senpai, uh, where, you know, it's like a respect your elders thing. We don't deal as much with in, uh, in, in the basketball scene, but, it's just a, it's a very, it's a very respectful culture and it's, it's a nice, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air. Like I could see how it could get annoying, but it's a breath of fresh air being a part, especially okay. being where we from, you know, everybody is so individualistic, uh, where we from all the time. So. Um, last question before we get out of here, how, how, how long, two, twofold question, how long do you want to do this? Do you want to continue playing? And then what are your, what are your plans and what are your aspirations like? after basketball <clears throat> yeah i mean it just depends on what the contracts are looking like to be honest like <laughs> it depends on no, what to, sure. yeah, no, that's at, at this point yeah this is year 10 for me i've had you know it's seven seven eight surgeries so it just depends my body is i'm getting to that point where it's like all right my body's starting to be like you know <laughs> it's still cool yeah. i still love it but right. yeah i'd say i'd say a couple more years i want to do it a couple more at least at least to 35 34 35 and then after basketball, um, you know, my my next dream has kind of been to all to be a GM of an NBA team. Um, mm. But I also like I also like podcasts and I also like media and stuff like that. Um, so um, it's you know I got a lot of different things I want to do. I have two startup companies that I that I've been a part of um, already that are doing all right. Um, in the technology space, in the VR space, so I like entrepreneurial type out. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One is a uh, Slingshot VR, and the other is Three Data. Um, and the uh, CEOs Cody Ross, a Slingshot VR, and Nick Wallace, I Wallen Wallace, I Three Data. So they're uh, business to business corporations, and uh, they're doing they're doing pretty well. And then starting this podcast that called the Role Player, um, in collaboration with with Swiss Cultures. Um, I'm supposed to be getting started up here this week. 
Um, so yeah, those, those are the things on my plate right now. And then, uh, maybe following my dad's footsteps too, at some point, just do some type of a, I want to start a fund, kind of a, a small investment fund, uh, with specifically with overseas athletes. So, um, those are other so things that, yeah. So me and my, me and my friend, Matt Janning, who plays out here too, from Minnesota, have been kicking that idea around and, uh, doing, doing preliminary stuff on that. So we'll just see how it goes for real. Okay. Um, Shout outs. Go ahead and do your shout outs before we before I close this out, brother. Any shout outs you want to give? Shout outs. Man, yeah. Always mom and dad. Always mom and dad for all the right. you know, everything that they've given me. Fan my brother as well. Gotta shout out my brother. He's a, a new father. Uh as of congrats November. To yeah, congrats, congrats to him. him. Thank you. Appreciate it. Made me an uncle. Um, and then always shout out to you. Appreciate you having me on, no doubt, man. Come on, this, man. This I was, appreciate you coming. I definitely a, appreciate a, it. a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I got to shout out my guys at Wisconsin, Coach Guard, Crab, Sharif, uh, and Dean, I don't know as well, but shout out, and then shout out to uh, Johnny Davis and Chucky, the Big Big Ten champs, man, that, that's relevant. Um, and that is that is pretty much it, man. That That's pretty much it for now. You know, I'm just over here living life, and for anybody else that I might have forgot that's going to hear this, always love back at the crib. Nah, for sure, man. I, d I definitely appreciate you for coming on, man. Like I said, you know, you know, the, the platform that I have, I just want to give people an opportunity to tell their story, their um, their sports journeys um, without like, you know, I, we, we oftentimes we don't have a platform for you just to speak freely without yeah. any other backlash or without any other follow up questions. Well, you know, you did this because of this and this is no, I just want you to speak, speak freely and for you to get for you to get your flowers and for me to big you up because you deserve it, bro. You definitely deserve appreciate it. Appreciate that, man. Love. Appreciate yeah, that. No doubt. So appreciate we that. always do a toast to get out of here. You got to pop the bourbon back open. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always to the same thing. First of all, once again, man, I appreciate you, man. I definitely appreciate you coming on. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, and to always, like I said before, to life, health, wealth, last but not least, sports talk, salute. Salute and love, man. I am Alan Cole, BZ Colburn, and this is Baseline to Goal Line, the illest sports podcast in the world. Peace and love. Sir.